The only thing better than a paper circuit is a paper circuit that lights up. One way to create an easy pop-up that lights up is by creating a slot and joint mechanism. This type of pop works well for adding a paper circuit because it's possible to expand the surface area to add more LEDs. In this tutorial, I'll show you the basics of how to build this mechanism and add your own circuit. To learn about different ways to use a slot and joint, I highly recommend that you check out Duncan Birmingham's pop-up channel on YouTube. Episode 11 features a variety of slot mechanisms that may be adapted to light up. To get started, here are a few useful tools and supplies. You'll need a circuit sticker LED, conductive fabric tape, a 3-volt coin cell battery, a battery holder template if you have one, or a scrap of paper folded in half. And you'll also need double-sided tape and an adhesive of your choice, as well as a ruler, scissors, pencil, pen knife, hole puncher, and a bone folder. For a complete supply list, please visit the link in the description below. There you'll find free downloadable templates, props, and a circuit diagram. So let's get started. A simple slot and joint mechanism features a piece of folded cardstock that's glued to the base card, parallel with the crease. As the card opens and closes, the angle of the jutting arm changes. The circuit we'll be making will start on the top of the moving arm and extend through a slot in the base card, connecting with a battery on the backing. To make it easier to focus on the underlying circuit, I'll be using a template and props that I created. Rather than demonstrating how to make a mechanism with a rectangular center, I'll be using a modified shape that looks like a coral reef. If you'd prefer to use the rectangular footprint, it'll also be available in the downloads. In addition to the base card, which measures 5.5 inches wide and 8.5 inches high, you'll also need a backing card cut to the same dimensions. It's helpful to use the circuit diagram as a guide. The central slot that you'll need to cut out will help you orient your project correctly as we go. It's a good idea to use a ruler and a bone folder, or an embossing tool, to score your pieces along the dotted lines before cutting them out. Use a pen knife to carefully cut out the slots. In the next step, you'll need to use an adhesive of your choice to assemble the mechanism. Line up the base of the folded arm and adhere it to the spotted square, keeping it parallel with the crease. Before gluing the central shape to the top, add two conductive fabric traces parallel to one another along the length of the arm. It's helpful to use the circuit diagram as a guide as you work. I like to leave a bit of protective backing on to make it easier to thread them through the slot. Now 
Next, bring the conductive fabric traces through the slot in the base card and mark their polarity with a pencil. Before we finish building the circuit, it's helpful to attach the backing card first. Line up the edges, score the crease, and use a piece of double-sided tape to adhere the left side of the base card to the backing layer. Then use the circuit diagram as a guide to orient the card in relation to its central slot. I'll be using a folded scrap of paper to make a battery holder, but if you have a battery template, feel free to use that instead. A Chibitronic stencil is a useful tool for making a battery holder from a scrap, although it's not necessary. Just be sure to use a circuit diagram as a guide to mark the positive and negative traces. Then go ahead and finish building your circuit keeping parallel lines parallel to help prevent a short circuit when your card is folded. I'm using a ball of conductive fabric tape as an anchor for my battery. The next step is to add the central shape to the mechanism, using the one that you prefer. Crease the piece using the score marks you made earlier. Next, we'll be adhering this piece on top of the base card with the arm jutting through it. Apply adhesive to the glue tabs and make sure that the piece is parallel with the crease. When you fold the card, everything should lay flat, with the exception of the arm jutting through the center. Before placing the LED, figure out where you want your decorative piece to be. Then poke a hole in it and mark the location for the LED with a pencil. I usually use two matching pieces.
When applying the LED sticker, be sure that the broad positive end is touching the positive trace and the pointy end is touching the negative trace. Adhere the piece to the arm with a bit of double-sided tape. I accidentally used a little too much of the sticky stuff, and I ended up having to use a backing piece behind the fish to keep it from sticking to the card. Before adding the second fish, use the strip of paper you cut out earlier to cover up the circuit. Trim it to size, add glue, and insert it through the slot. Then you can add the final fish piece. If desired, you can add a vellum scrap between the two layers to help diffuse the light. The last step is to add a few more props to your pop-up spread to make the scene complete. And that's how you add a circuit to a slot and joint pop-up mechanism. To learn more about paper circuits, visit chibitronics.com.